everyone um, to this mosaic webinar. Um, this is part of the Ericrit 2 project. Um, yeah, and we will also record um, the first part um, of this meeting. The first part will be a presentation about um, Mosaic, um, what is this doing and what are the new features of Mosaic um, 3.0. And um, yeah, we will record this. So during this first part, um, we will not open the mics for, for questions. Um, so please keep muted and after this presentation we will have a part with some uh, with a tutorial and some demos and there um, you can always uh, interrupt us and ask questions um, yeah so then we will start my colleague uh, Rif Eilers will start with the with the presentation and then later on um, Annika Ofenoch and um, me will do the tutorials and the demos Okay, thank you very much, Jan. So welcome, everybody. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. And yeah, I will start with a presentation about uh, Mosaic. As Jan said, later on, we will have some um, hands-on tutorials, some, some demos, but uh, we would like to start with a theoretical overview of uh, what Mosaic is able to do, how you can use Mosaic. And uh, so I will start with a short motivation. So um, why we have Mosaic, what's what's the reason behind, uh, reasoning behind Mosaic. Then I will give a brief overview of the main features, the very basic features of, of Mosaic on a high level. And um, then I will would like to do a kind of deep dive into the APIs of, of Mosaic. So what you can do with Mosaic, what are the new features of Mosaic 3. And uh, then I will conclude my uh, presentation with some use cases, um, what you can do with, with Mosaic uh, 3 and your own research. So with this being said, uh, I want to start with the motivation. So, um, why do we use Mosaic and why do we use co-simulation? And um, in our own research, um, we often need to touch uh, totally different domains. Like uh, we have some simulation where we have electric grids, some, some energy market processes, communication systems, and so on. But it's also not limited to the energy domain. So we also do some some simulations where we want to consider industry robots and this stuff. So these are lots of, of different domains and it's kind of hard or it's a huge effort to, to do a monolithic model for all this stuff. So a huge scenario and of course you cannot be an expert in all of these different fields. And uh, this then brought us to the idea of, of co-simulation and of course it's, it's not a unique idea to our own research. Of course there are also different institutes that are doing some similar things. And um, we thought about um, a kind of, um, of metric um, uh, about co-simulation. So of course there are uh, there is these uh, traditional way of, of simulation where you have um, just um, um, where you have just um, one um, one model and uh, just the number of solvers is also just one. So you have a classical simulation, just a single model, a single solver is used for this model. So this is the, the old way of modeling. And uh, then there are different ways of um, to, to separate the, the models and, and the solvers, so to, to differentiate between uh, different tools. And there are also different ways of doing this. One is the way of splitting up the, the, the old traditional model into several uh, pieces. So you have different models for different parts of your system, but you are still using one solver. So uh, it's a way to, to integrate the knowledge of different uh, people into different models, but then you, you need to integrate everything quite um, uh, closely in order to use the same solver. Then there is a different way of, of doing this thing. Um, or 
a different way of, of, of handling simulations where you just have one model. So you are using just a single model for, for all the different parts of the system, but you are using different solvers uh, for, for the calculations. And um, this is often also um, spoken about in, in the um, topic of, of co-simulation. But uh, this kind of modeling is more of a, of a parallel simulation. So you, you speed up um, uh, your, your simulation. You can use different um, uh, compute uh, nodes to, to do the calculations. But in essence, you have just one model. And uh, what we are talking about when we, we are talking about co-simulation is always just this part here in the top right. So we are always using different models and different solvers at the same time. Um, so we, we have kind of, um, yeah, both worlds. We, we separate the, the problem into different, or the system into different models. And we are also using different solvers that we can, can speed up the simulations by using uh, different computers for different calculations. And um, one of the, the main idea for this is of course to, as I said in the beginning, to, um, to integrate the knowledge of different experts. And uh, of course, at the same time, um, we can also reuse uh, tools that are already available. So um, there are of course some, some excellent tools for, for load flow calculations or for communication um, simulations. Um, so we don't have to, to re-implement everything. We can use tools that are already available. Of course, we need to integrate those tools in our simulations, but uh, um, from our point of view, um, this is um, not so complicated in comparison to do everything just by yourself. So this is the, the motivation uh, why we are using co-simulation. And um, this then brings me to, to the next. Um, uh, and I have a slight problem here with oh, this way. Uh, with, with the laser pointer, but now it's working again. Um, if you do this integration in the, in the co-simulation um, uh, of different tools, you have still uh, two ways of, of doing this. And um, the, the first approach is a kind of ad hoc approach. So if you have all these different um, tools, and let's say it's only a small number, you just have two or three different tools, or maybe four as, as shown here, um, and then you you want to integrate all of them together, and um, you you need to write those interfaces, and uh, you can do it in a ad hoc way just by writing some specialized interfaces um, between these tools. And this is a, a very straightforward idea. If you have um, two or maybe also three different tools that you want to integrate, but it really gets um, messy if you have more tools to integrate. So here in this example, we have four different tools. And as you can see, we already need to, to have lots of interfaces between all of these tools. And of course, if the, the number of tools to integrate rises, then this uh, cannot be, be done anymore. So there is a different approach of doing this, uh, shown here at the bottom, the generic uh, way to integrate those models, where you have a co-simulation framework in the middle. So um, when you want to integrate uh, new tools, um, new models in the simulation, you always have to write a single interface once for all of these tools. So you always write the, in, the interface between the tool and the co-simulation framework. And of course, um, this, uh, in this way, um, the, the effort that you need to, to spend uh, in order to, to write uh, your, your models um, scales with um, the, the numbers of tools that you want to integrate. Of course, our tool that we invented and implemented uh, for this problem, as you all know, is uh, Mosaic. 
as it was indicated by the by the name of today's workshop and um so this is uh, really the thing that we wanted to do with mosaic right such a co-simulation uh, framework um um write interfaces for already available tools, write new tools. And so we, we started to implement Mosaic. And the main uh, features of Mosaic are that um, we support discrete time and also now discrete event simulations. And uh, this discrete event simulation is a, is a new feature of Mosaic 3. Then, um, um, these simulations can be run in an accelerated way, um, which means that um, the, the simulation times might be faster than work clock time. So if you have a large computer cluster or you have um, uh, some, some simple calculations that, that need to be done, then um, the simulation can be way faster than, than real time. So you can simulate very long scenarios in a short amount of time. Um, it's also possible in the other way around. So if you don't have the computer power and you really have a very, very complicated problem, um, it's also no problem that uh, the simulation might run slower than than real time. So um, um, yeah, it's, it's possible to investigate totally different problems um, um, without considering uh, the, the, the performance of the calculations. And at the same time, we also support uh, real-time simulations. Of course, um, not real-time simulations um, with, uh, with very, very short uh, um, time delays. So it's not like that uh, we then always um, uh, have milliseconds in the, um, in the mosaic simulations. So it's, it's not um, an alternative to some, some real-time simulators as OpenRT or RTDS systems. Um, but we can synchronize the real-time and the simulation time in Mosaic. So that uh, whenever you just need um, calculations for every second, but you want to integrate some, some tools um, that need to be synchronized uh, by the, by the real-time, then it's possible to do this with Mosaic. Then we um, have the ability to integrate, um, um, then uh, maybe uh, questions maybe at the end. So we are definitely happy to, to get some questions, but uh, as stated by Jan in the beginning, we want to answer all of these in, in the end. Um, then, um, yeah, we have the ability to integrate these uh, IP protected components. So you don't have to open up your, your knowledge. You can just integrate compiled code um, in the simulations. And as I stated in, in the beginning, um, we have the systems of different models, different solvers. So um, it's uh, really just integrated to the very core of Mosaic that um, different components can be executed in parallel and also of course it then can be scaled uh, on uh, compute clusters so that you're using all of your infrastructure uh, for, for a single simulation. Then uh, I think the, the most important thing is that um, Mosaic is an open source tool and it's an LGPL tool. Um, so, um, whenever you're using um, Mosaic as a library, um, you are not forced um, to open up your own code, which means that um, if you have a, a simulator, a proprietary simulator, you can integrate this simulator in a Mosaic simulation. Um, it can be published, everything is okay, and you don't have to, to, to give uh, your own code to the world. But on the other hand, if you really um, want to work together with us, and we would uh, be um, delighted if you, you plan to do this, um, and you have some, some adjustments for the core of Mosaic, then um, of course um, you then have to, to, to give back um, your, your code changes um, to the community. 
Then, in addition to, to Mosaic Core, so the core simulation framework itself, of course, there's an um, ecosystem of utilities um, that you, you want to have that you need for, for the simulations. And, uh, of course, these are the simulation models by itself. And um, we have um, um, a, a number of simulation models that are also open source, and uh, you can find all of them in um, the Mosaic uh, group uh, at GitLab. So whenever you want to integrate your, your, um, your implementation work uh, with uh, the community of Mosaic, then uh, please go to, to this um, uh, group at, at GitLab and uh, there you can interact with us uh, in Mosaic, developing Mosaic Core, but also in developing some um, utilities for the ecosystem. And besides models itself, there are also some interfaces for simulation tools like Panda Power, for instance, um, some wrappers for different programming languages, and then um, um, also some wrapper for some standard interfaces like FMI or for protocols like OPC UA. And of course, you always need some tools like um, um, tools for visualization, for, for data storage, so some wrappers for some databases. And uh, there we also have some stuff like um, uh, HDR5 interface or um, very new an interface for InfluxDB so that you can use Grafana for your visualizations. So this was the, the beginning of uh, my talk. So I spoke about the motivations and the, the, the basic features of um, Mosaic. And uh, now I want to start with, uh, with a more closer look at uh, Mosaic. So what is the architecture of Mosaic? What are the interfaces? Um, what are um, the new features that we have um, um, implemented with Mosaic Suite? And um, therefore, I, I want to present here a very, very rough overview of Mosaic's architecture. So at the, the very core of, of Mosaic, we have two components, um, the scheduler and uh, the simulation managers, and they, they interact with, with each other. So these are the components that um, identify uh, which simulator needs to be stepped next, what can be done in parallel, or what has to be done in, in a sequence, and um, how are the, the connections uh, to all the, the simulators on different machines managed. So this is all Mosaic Core. And um, then we prov uh, provide uh, two um, APIs um, that you, you need to support in order to really use mosaic and um, uh, the the first um, uh, API that that I want to to have a closer look at is the scenario API here at the bottom so which means that um, <clears throat> when you are using uh, already available simulators maybe some um, simulators um, that are written by by offers or also maybe some of the the simulators that some colleagues of of yours um, have been developed um, you can just use those uh, those components and then when you want to set up your own simulation your your own um, uh, your own scenario then um, you need to write a scenario script um, and um, in order to write the scenario script, you need to, to, to use the scenario API. And um, which means that, um, let's say, you want to have a, a different simulation, you have a different topology for, uh, for, um, for an energy system, then you just, need some, you just need some changes in your scenario script, but you can reuse all, this, all these models that are already available. So you just need some changes in your, your scenario script in order to do this. And uh, the basic uh, features of, of this uh, scenario API is that, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an API for a Python script. 
So in essence, you are just writing your, your Python script that specify everything of the simulations and in the end you can just execute the simulation so you can just run the, the simulation. And um, at first you need to, to import um, the, the Python module of, of Mosaic and um, then you specify uh, what, um, what uh, simulators um, you want to use in in the simulate in the simulations and uh, this is specified by by such a such a dictionary and uh, this dictionary is given to to Mosaic. so then it's already um specified that maybe you're using um a model for the electric grid a model for some households a model for some pv systems and a model um, for a controller then the next step and the script is then um, that uh, um, yeah you need to um, to start all of these these components and um, by the way um, in mosaic we always speak about simulators so you might hear this word quite often today and um, a simulator in our point of view is a program which controls models of a specific type or acts as an interface to some external tools and we came up with with this naming because um it's it's kind of um from time to time you just have a model you are directly using a model but um in a different example you need an interface for for an already available tool and um or you have um you have a large number of some very very small um models and it's it's more efficient if you um you have a, a program that controls those those very small models so we came up with I, this idea of always using a simulator which houses the the models or which is an interface uh, to some external tools so it's it's kind of simple from from mosaic point of view always use a simulator and there you have the interface to the models to the tools to the databases to everything so the the second step in the scenario api is is to start all of these simulator processes so the interface to external tools is established and all of this stuff then uh, at the next step um, there might be some parameterization that you need to do. So um, you have the simulator for, for the grid model, but you still need to specify which electric topology to use. And this is the step in the scenario API where you do some stuff like this. And of course, the same is, is true for, for the um, other models. So in this example, we are using a single simulator for the households and the PV systems, but it's not just a single household, it's four households or two PV systems. And um, then we also need to specify maybe some, some details of the control algorithm. We are doing all of this in this instantiate uh, phase. And then the next, last step uh, in the scenario API is, that uh, you need to connect everything to each other so that you really specify um, which, um, um, which actors are controlled by, um, by the control algorithm. And uh, then in the end, if you have set up everything, then the last thing to do is to, to run the, the scenario with just word run. So everything is executed. So this, in essence, is is the overview of uh, what you need to do um, in the the Python script to start some some simulations. And um, all of this part is uh, is um, the same in uh, Mosaic two and Mosaic three. So if you are already familiar with uh, Mosaic, if you have used Mosaic in the past, then there is um, not so many stuff that has changed here. So the overall um, the overall structure is still the same, but we have some some new abilities uh, for the interfaces to the simulators. 
And uh, this is the next part that I wanted to speak about. So we spoke about here these, these bottom parts of the scenario API and the scenario script. And now I want to, uh, to speak about the upper part here, about the com a component or Zim API and the, the interfaces to integrate your own simulators, your own models um, in a mosaic um, simulation. And here on this overview slide, it's kind of um, maybe uh, using this control uh, strategy with a multi-agent system um, to control the, the electric grid or to control all the actors and the electric grid. Um, maybe you want to, to have a look at a different control strategy, maybe something hierarchic, hierarchical as um, these uh, strategy here. And therefore you need to, to implement a new uh, simulator for the, for the controller. And yeah, then you need to, uh, to, to write a new simulator by using the, the component uh, interface and then you uh, you can, in essence, run a very, very similar scenario script. Just uh, a few lines of code just need to be changed to specify that you are now using the other uh, simulator and all the rest can, can, um, can be untouched. And now again, a more close look at this uh, simulation API. So as I said, it's the interface between Mosaic's core and a simulator. And um, we provide yeah, two completely different ways of doing this. One is the low level API. So, which means that um, we have the part that is um, um, provided by Mosaic here. So Mosaic core and uh, then, then Mosaic's simulation API. And then there is the part that you need to implement by yourself in order to integrate a, a simulator um, to Mosaic. And um, you can use the, the low level API of Mosaic, which means that um, you um, can, you are very, very flexible. So you can do, do lots of crazy stuff, but it's a little bit more effort from your side because um, you need to implement the socket implementation. We are delivering JSON packages or expecting JSON packages. And um, so you need to do the serialization, deserialization of, um, of the data. And so you are very flexible in, in what, you, what you do or what you can do, but it's a little bit more effort from your side. And um, therefore, we also have high level APIs. They are shown here at uh, the, the right column. And in a, in a high level API, it's like that uh, Mosaic provides a little bit more. It's not just like the, the basic um, interface, there is, um, there is uh, a second layer like um, that um, we, we provide a more high level API where we are doing all this, this very fundamental stuff. So, so the socket communication, the JSON stuff and, and all of this is done then um, already by some, some uh, mosaic interfaces. And then the, the, your effort to integrate a simulator uh, later is, is, is less. So you, you only have to implement, um, or you, you only have to, to for instance, subclass um, a Python um, module. And uh, so it's, it's less work from your side. So I just think it's kind of, we have, um, we have um, yeah, the, the best of both worlds. We, you can use this low level API and um, so all of what I what I shown in the um, in the um, scenario API, all of these calls with init and create and all to set up the stuff, the simulators to parameterize and all this stuff. Um, this can be um, uh, directly then um, uh, be done with those low level communication. And um, on the other hand. Um, if you want to write a Python 
um, simulator or you want to use the the fmi uh, interface or for instance c sharp matlab java some of those tools then we already have some high level apis and you don't need to do everything by yourself So then have a more close look at these, these API. So as I said, we have these init, create, step, get data. So these are the, 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 the fundamental communication steps. So init is done at the initialization phase in your scenario script when you, when you set up all these uh, different simulator connections, create is then when you, uh, when you, um, parameterize your your models. So this is the, the the composition phase, and then when you when you started the simulation, if you executed Mosaic Run, then um, the scheduler will step um, your simulators, and then um, all the the data that is needed by other tools, by other simulators, or the data that needs to be pushed to to a database is then um, requested by Mosaic from the simulators. So you have the, the step and get data calls and all of this then is, is then, then handled in a, in a loop um, that represents the, the simulation time. And um, you might already know this from, from Mosaic uh, 2. And now I want to focus a little bit on the Mosaic 3 features. So we have here done some slight modifications uh, of what we, we had with Mosaic 2. And the modifications are that uh, we, into, um, we integrated here the time resolution in, um, in Mosaic 3. So it was also already possible in Mosaic 2 to, uh, um, to use different um, time resolutions, but it was kind of handled um, implicitly. So um, you could use um, milliseconds for, for as a, as a um, basic um, um, resolution um, for the simulation. You could also use seconds or 15 minute uh, steps in, in the simulation, but it was handled implicitly. So it was never really reported to the, to the simulators what's the, the the time resolution right now and and um, um, we um, did this slight modification here in the init phase um, that uh, the time resolution is now done explicitly and it's it's communicated to the simulators which means that that new simulators can adapt themselves to this to these time resolutions so um, you can specify uh, a dead time, for instance, that a controller needs a 15 second pause um, after um, he adjusted something. And uh, no matter if you're using seconds, milliseconds or whatever, as, as your time resolutions, um, these, these dead times will always be correct. So something like this is possible with, with the time resolution. Um, then um, uh, the um, then I'm already here um, about yeah, a, a very fundamental feature for um, uh, from uh, Mosaic 3 that uh, the next step, the return argument of this uh, of the uh, the step method, is um, optional now. So it's it's this one here, and um, which means that um, um, with Mosaic 2, you always uh, need needed to report back when your simulator wants to be stepped the next time. Um, which means that um, you are able to adapt um, the, the, the execution sequence of the simulators only by yourself. So whenever you see that, ah, oh, now I, this simulator needs to be stepped, um, uh, more often, or it can can make a pause for for a longer duration. It was possible with um, Mosaic 2, but only you could only use internal informations for this only within the simulator. 
And uh, with Mosaic 3, and this is sort of the big DES, discrete event simulation feature of Mosaic 3, um, you don't need to report back this next step. And then uh, your simulator can be triggered by the availability of data, which is defined by other simulators. So um, um, the, the sequence, the execution sequence is not um, done alone by, by the simulators themselves, but uh, they might depend from, or the execution might depend from other simulators. So some simulation might be way more efficient in this way. And uh, in order to, to support this big new feature, um, we, we need uh, to have more information about um, uh, the simulators itself. And um, this is done here um, in the return argument of the create function. So um, um, there are new options um, in, in the metadata. And uh, so the, the simulators uh, can report the, in, in this metadata of uh, what they are able to do, what they want to do, and you can also, of course, you can also adjust this in, in your uh, scenario script. Um, so these two features combined, this uh, next step is optional together with these new possibilities and the metadata, this um, supports this big feature of uh, the DES execution. And one of our design goals, of course, as you can see, was that um, we want to, to, to support these new features only by slight modifications in, in the APIs. So if you already have um, a Mosaic 2 model, um, there's not so much that you need to, to change in order to, to use this model in a Mosaic 3 simulation. So what are these changes in the, in the metadata, uh, which is returned by init? And um, here you can see the, the dictionary of the simulator description. So everything in black here is already uh, part of Mosaic 2. So if you have worked with Mosaic before, you might have, um, uh, you might know this. And there are the parameters to parameterize um, uh, um, uh, a simulator. There are these attributes. So the, the data that is, that is um, reported back to to mosaic or that is um, that is given by other simulators and um, now we have um, uh, here on the models two two new um, um, configurations and one is is a list of uh, triggering attributes which means that um, you can specify here in this metadata of a simulator um, which um, attributes should cause an execution or a stepping of this um, simulator. So whenever new data is available um, for these attributes, then um, this, um, this simulator will be stepped um, no matter what is specified in these, uh, these next step um, um, argument. So, the simulator can specify nothing for next step. And whenever new data is available for this triggering attributes, then it will be stepped. Then another feature is uh, the, the non-persistent configuration. Again, it's a list of attributes and uh, the attributes that are specified here are attributes um, that will not be handled as old Mosaic 2 attributes. So in, in the old Mosaic uh, 2 um, world, all attributes um, are always persistent, which means um, that um, as long as there are no new values for these attributes, you can use just the, the old values that you had. So it's, it's kind of um, a result of, of calculations for, for physical parameters. You can use the, the old value of, um, for, for the voltage at a node as long as uh, you get the, the next execution of the, the load flow uh, calculation and you have some new results. But um, if you, you have 
these um, these DES systems, then not all your data that you have might be of this this physical uh, kind of data. You might also want to send some, let's say, messages between the simulators, and these messages messages might be only uh, valid for a single point in time. So um, it's not like you can use the 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 old me message as long as there's something new. It's like um, the message is only valid at a, at a single point in time. And in, in order to support use cases uh, where you have this kind of, of data that you want to exchange via Mosaic, um, we invented this non-persistent um, configuration. So these are the, the two big features in, in the metadata. So not so much has changed, but it opens a whole new world for, for, uh, for the simulations. And um, in order to, to simplify this a little bit, uh, we also uh, invented uh, the, the type configuration. So um, there are three different types. One is time-based, event-based, and then hybrid. And um, it's just a shortcut for your configurations. So um, if you specify um, that the type of your simulator is time-based, then you don't need to to um, to um, write down those list of triggering and non-persistent arguments or attributes. Um, you just specify it's time-based, and then it's really completely like an old traditional Mosaic 2 simulator. So everything stays the same. You need to then you need to to uh, give back next step. Otherwise, it will be triggered just once at the very beginning and then never again. But you can really use um, time-based um, simulators just by adding the single line type time-based. Everything is fine. On the other hand, you might um, really want to to write some some new event-based simulators. All attributes should trigger. Uh, the the execution of this uh, simulators and it only sends messages to to other simulators so all the data should be non persistent and uh, then you also don't need to to um, configure those lines where you list everything that you have you can just specify that it's event based and then uh, the the cool thing then is the hybrid simulator so when you specify the type as as hybrid then you really must use um, these uh, two lists where you really specify that some attributes are, are triggering, some attributes um, are, will not trigger the execution, some output uh, might be persistent, some others might be non-persistent, and there you can really uh, highly tune a simulator to a scenario. Okay, so what does this mean from a scheduling point of view? So um, here at the top, um, there is this um, this um, traditional um, mosaic simulation, which of course is still supported. And um, um, so you can do this self-stepping, you can still do it in exactly the same way. The output uh, of your simulator, so the output of simulator here, AA here in this example is, is persistent. So simulator B will use the output um, of, um, of A even if it's at a, at a different time step. Everything is fine. But then you have these new features like um, um, similar example, but um, uh, simulator B is an event based simulator. So you don't need to to specify when it will be executed, it will be triggered as soon as uh, simulator A has some new data available for B. So uh, everything might be fine here. And um, with this stuff, like is data available or is data not available, and um, another one might be triggered or not, you can do some very cool features which um, you couldn't do in Mosaic uh, too. And the big example for this are same time or algebraic loops. 
um, where you really specify without a progress in time that uh, the th simulators might um, might trigger each other again and again until let's say um, a combined state a combined physical state um, is reached so maybe you separated your your physical domain into two different models but of course the the models depend on each other and um, maybe from time to time you really need those those loops to to really converge to to a combined state in these two models and something like this is now uh, now possible with these uh, triggering des mechanism in mosaic and uh, the last feature here that i wanted on to show on this slide is also this um, feature that um, you can also um, uh, specify that some data is um is calculated right now but uh, it's for a future time step so here in this example here a has an output for b but um uh, it's not defined for time step two but it's uh, defined for a later time step and um so um uh, it can directly be be handed over to uh, mosaic with the new mosaic 3 um apis and here and this on this slide this is shown here in the get data that uh now you uh i missed the laser pointer here on this uh in the time t um and the return argument of of get data so that you can always specify that um whenever you need to to transfer some data or whenever mosaic requests some data you can specify um uh the the time for this of uh, um which um the time when this this data is valid and uh this is a feature um for for performance improvements so it was a very very slight modification of the api but um um in this way you you need to do less stepping in in your simulations because um maybe you you calculate something especially or example like a communication simulation you you calculate how what's what's the delay of a, of a package so when will it arrive at um at a destination and uh, so the output of your simulate of your simulation is is not really or of this simulator is not really um this uh the data of the package it's more the time when it will arrive and with the slight modification of the of this api you can directly specify output information like this without triggering without self triggering again of the simulator and now uh, we have the the um last feature here in these um uh no sorry not not the last but one of the last features here uh, of our new modifications which is the max advance in the step method and um it's an information that is provided by mosaic to the simulators and uh, the simulators might take advantage of this they might use it they they don't need to but uh, it's also um information that might cause great performance improvements so that less stepping is involved in, in the simulations and uh i tried to to highlight this these performance improvements here on this slide so i want to have a look at a small example um we have two controlling agents let's say in a in an energy system and um uh, there's a communication simulator that wants to to simulate the the, the communication uh, between these two agents and uh let's say agent one is um just a um traditional mosaic two agent it will be it will just step itself uh, at time step one five nine and and uh it will carry on in this way um but um agent two should only be triggered um when the uh the the message from agent one reaches agent two and we need the communication simulator in order to calculate when this will be 
And this here is then um, an example for the Mosaic DES um, for Mosaic DES simulation, but without using uh, this Max Advance uh, feature, new feature in the in the API. So simulation starts. Time step one. Agent one is triggered. Um, it, ha it has a message for um, for agent two, but it first needs to to transfer this message to the communication simulator. And now the communication simulator always needs, it can just only um, use uh, Mosaic's fundamental time step for the progress. So it, it just can, can simulate a single time step and then it needs to trigger itself uh, because the, the message hasn't reached the destination yet. And so it has to trigger itself again and again and again and again as long as then the uh, the package really arrives at agent two, and then the communication simulator can trigger agent uh, two. So it's already an H in DS system, but I think you agree that this is not very efficient. And um, then with this additional API change of this Max Advance, um, then we really can uh, can benefit. Um, or we, we really can can improve the performance. So the same example here uh, at the bottom of the slide, again, agent one has a message at time step one for agent two. It triggers the communication simulator, but now Mosaic reports this max advance. And uh, with this max advance, the, the time is reported um, as long as there will be nothing else in Mosaic that might affect these simulators. So it really specified that communication simulator, you can carry on with your simulation because you, you will not receive um, something new in the, in the next steps. You can just carry on until um, um, a time step where something is going on in Mosaic. And here in this example, it's like communication simulator is triggered together with the information that you it can simulate until time step five and only five because agent one already specified the um, the execution at five and there might be a second message which uh, will be transferred to, to, to the communication simulator. Of course, the communication simulator should do a combined simulation of both packages. So, um, it needs uh, to, to, to get this data at five, but until five, nothing is possible there. So it can just be a single execution of the communication simulator to progress from one to five. And here on this example, it's like, okay, um, there might be a second message or nothing at all, but uh, then the communication simulator can again can progress in time now until max advance nine and it just calculates here when the um, when the message will arrive at agent two and um, this can then directly be transferred with this um, time attribute in the api so we just need two executions of uh, the communication simulators in comparison to a very noisy uh, stepping in this first example and uh, I think you all agree that um, if you really are using then milliseconds for the um, for for a time resolution, and then some components which are only need to which only need to ca uh, to calculate something every second, then it's way more efficient with Max Advance and this reporting of of uh, the time of the output. And now I'm coming to, I'm, I'm nearly about to, to go to the last part of um, my presentation here. And this is the last feature of, of Mosaic, of the new Mosaic API, that we also now have an asynchronous call with a set event. And this is just like that um, um, external triggers can be integrated in a Mosaic simulation. And uh, um, I will speak about this in um, 
in the next slides when I speak about use cases. So this brings me to the last part of the presentation, some very fundamental use cases. So what we are doing at office are very often uh, simulations of energy system with controllers, energy markets, PV systems, of course, an electric grid where we need some load flow calculations. And uh, with these new features, we can do stuff like um, a controller can be executed every minute, but also each time when there is an external trigger, like um, the transformer tab has changed and our controller is, is also triggered each second when the uh, when the the transformer did a change and uh, we can have these these convergent to to shared states within same time loops here also on these simulations and this features is is often in papers also labeled as super dense super dense simulation time so we can support simulations with which needs something like this and um, then we we have more freedom in writing the simulation uh, the simulators with these um, reporting of the time resolutions. And I already spoke about this example. So we can specify, let's say, a controller has 20 seconds of dead band uh, in the control algorithm, and um, it's always correct, uh, always calculated correctly, um, no matter what what is the time resolution of the simulation. Then, um, if you you really want to have simulations where you have um, different simulators of different time scales, and of course the the fundamental example is always uh, an energy system where you also want to to have a look at the the communication um, um, between some components, then you naturally have a system with simulators that operate on different time scales. So the, the communication, you, you really want to see when, when a package arrives at, an, at a different control agent, and therefore you need milliseconds as the, the fundamental resolu resolution. But um, if you only uh, want to consider the, the quasi steady state of the system, then seconds for the load flow calculations are, are totally totally sufficient, and then you have these these different uh, time scales, and uh, with all of these new features, reporting of time, max advance, and so on, and these these trigger and DES triggering just execute the simulator whenever there really is data available, then uh, your mosaic three simulations are totally more efficient. Than, uh, than the old mosaic uh, two way of doing things. And then um, I think it's then one of the last examples is then um, a use case for, for real time uh, simulations. Um, you can also really use these these new features to uh, to integrate mosaic simulations with real time simulations in your laboratories. So let's say you have an Opel RT or RTDS simulator in your laboratory, and um, um, but you then want to to integrate um, other models that that operate on on lower time resolutions. Maybe you you already have uh, such a model and you just want to integrate this. You don't want to rewrite the model in a different with a different setup with a hardware setup. Then you might just integrate. Uh, a mosaic simulation was with a laboratory setup, and uh, therefore you can use these set event features. And here in this example, it's like a human in the loop scenario, where an operator has to 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 interact with a simulation, and um, then it's it's sufficient to to use mosaic for some part of these systems. And uh, another example for these um, set event external triggering is also an efficient implementation of, of standard protocols. So um, that you, you really can use a, a 104 interface to, to integrate a mosaic simulation with, with components in your laboratory. So this is then the, the end of my part. And uh, I fear that it took a little bit long, but I hope we have enough time then in the end for, for the demonstrations and questions. And um, my summary is that um, 
we we ha now have with Mosaic lots of new features um, to support these time-based, event-based, and even these hybrid simulators that can trigger themselves and are also triggered by the availability of data. And um, then that we um, we can really uh, support more efficient at the same time also more accurate scenarios you can really use some milliseconds uh, for time resolutions and it will still be in an efficient simulation you can use these algebra algebraic loops to to converge to to um to common states uh, these super dense uh time is a really important feature i think and um then also some some new options um, that the simulators can adapt to to the time resolutions and you have more possibilities um, to integrate a, a mosaic simulations with uh, external simulators with external hardware simulators for instance and uh, then i can only highly recommend uh, that uh, that uh, all researchers uh, work together in a, in a community to to really have a combined um, uh, ecosystem of models and and interfaces and so on so that uh, there are already some simulators available for chp units heat pumps and totally different examples of course and uh, that um, we together work on some interfaces for for tools like communication like the communication simulator omnet plus plus um that uh, we really want to support uh protocols like uh, the new fmi3 and i think uh, with with our changes that um that we did with mosaic3 that uh, we are able to support all of the new fmi3 features and uh, so that it's it's more uh, that setting up simulations for the energy domain or also for for other domains that uh, this um will be will be a task where where lots of stuff can be reused and then my my last very short uh Command is, is of course that uh, we as office and we as, as the co-simulation group in office, um, of course have the the primary focus on on writing this this mosaic tool and uh, and um, working together with with available tools and components, but uh, of course we are also doing some some research on top of mosaic, and um, there we we also have some advancements that we are looking at uncertainty quantification design of experiments the replacement of physical models with surrogates and more automatic setup of scenarios integration of of um, these uh, devops approaches that docker containers kubernetes are, is used and so on that uh, we are also focusing on <clears throat> on some advancements in in all of these fields um that um that mosaic can can be used for for more research and and more analysis um so this is not a primary mosaic topic it's more like of the tooling and and the 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 stuff that that is around uh, mosaic and um this is really a, a thing that we are doing in our research so that we can do some some optimization of control algorithms that we can can optimize um, the uh, the future expansion plans for for electric grids and of course then this um uh, has an, an overlap with other available tools like the the umov tool that you that you might um know but uh we think our mosaic focus is always that we 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 focus on the on an yeah, operational uh, simulation of the energy system so that we have all these dirty effects, all these control interactions and so on. So you can really have all the details and the simulations and then you are doing these optimizations and so on on top of this. I hope that uh, I could give a, a, an overview of, of Mosaic 3 and, and our research and I hope that you find it really interesting and um, 
that you might to cons might consider um, Mosaic for your own research and for your own analysis. And I would be delighted if um, some of you have some interest in, in working together with us in the Mosaic community that we can together improve Mosaic and also the, the ecosystem of Mosaic with models, wrappers, and also with some of the tooling around Mosaic. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, I will head back to Jan. Oh yeah, thank you for the presentation, Rave. Um, as we're a bit behind the, the time plan, maybe we have now a short um, question round. So there was already this one question. Maybe you can say something yeah. about the. Of course. So there was already this this question about what's the the smallest time step um, that uh, we can handle, and. Um, and yeah, as I said, the, the last example will be um, also the same time loop. So maybe we can then do a discussion about this. Um, yeah, so first I wanted um, to outline how to get in contact with us. As already mentioned in the first presentation, there's this, uh, all the code of Mosaic is in, in GitLab. We have here some, some structure of examples, tools, and components, and here the main things um, available, the Mosaic core and some high level APIs. Uh, we also have some repositories for um, yeah, internal development, which will be published in the future when they are finished. Um, and I just wanted to shortly to show the documentation. Here you find um, yeah, everything about Mosaic, uh, for example, the installation instruction or you find here also um, the tutorials, which I will show now. Um, and you can yeah, write us an email at mosaic at office.de or you can subscribe to the mailing list and uh, ask questions there. Um, if you have some, uh, yeah, find some, some errors or something in Mosaic you can open issues in GitLab or if you, um, develop something on your own or, or change something, um, can also contribute and uh, create merge requests. Or if you have um, completely new components for Mosaic, um, you can also contact us that we maybe can share it in the Mosaic repository so that we can link it on, on the homepage. Um, because I think um, it would be nice to, to share the, the things which are developed around Mosaic. So what I, I um, want to present now is uh, first um, the tutorial, which is also uh, on the home page. Um, if you want to have a deeper look after this, maybe um, you can also find all the code in the in the main um, GitLab repository in the docs folder. Um, and then I would like to show a discrete event simulation demo and then my colleague Annika will show an Omnet++ demo. Um, yeah, so I will start with this tutorial. So the tutorial um, has this the simple base model, which is uh, the classic um, mosaic time-based uh, model. And then later on also some, some new features of Mosaic VR are, are shown um, with a controller for this. So the simple model has um, an output, which is a, a value. This value is in the beginning initialized, and then later um, for each time step, um, a delta is added to this value, and this delta can be defined from outside. So how would we inf implement this in, in Python? We have here the class model. In the initialization, we can uh, provide this init value if we want, or if not, it would be zero. So this would be set set here and then the delta is um, in the initialization, it's one. Then when we run a simulation, the step function is called and here the delta value is added to the current um, value of this model. Um, so now when we want to connect this to Mosaic, um, 
we have to use the Mosaic API and import it. And we have to import the example model, um, what I showed in the slide before. And we have this meta description, as already mentioned. And here we have this type um, time base. So this is a classical Mosaic uh, 2 type. We have um, to define here the model, which would have the name example model. Uh, we define the parameters, which is this init well, what is um, used yeah, for the parameterization in the beginning. And then we have these attributes, which are the delta and the, the value. Um, and here we don't have to specify if it's an input or an output, just all attributes are listed here. Um, so based on this meta description, we know how we um, yeah, should be able to call this model. So we should be able to instantiate um, by calling example model, which is here defined in the models list and by defining the init well. And then we can access this um, values which are in the in the attribute list. Um, to achieve this um, in the context of Mosaic, we have to now to implement these class examples in, which is based on the Mosaic simulator. So in the initialization, we uh, call the super uh, the, the super initialization of the of the Mosaic simulator. We can define the prefix for the entities ID. So um, as Riff explained, we have the simulator and within each simulator, we can have multiple instances of this model. So we have uh, an entity ID for each of these instances. Um, then we have to implement these uh, methods, Riff already explained, um, which are part of the Mosaic uh, simulator API. Um, the first here is the init where we get um, a simulator ID, a time resolution, and we can, if we want, overwrite the EID prefix. Um, in this case here, we are not doing anything with the time resolution. We're just checking if it's uh, if it's one, um, but yeah, here could be added and, and handling of other time resolutions. Uh, here we can overwrite the prefix, and in the end, we return the meta object, which was defined on the slide before to get all this uh, information back to Mosaic. Then the next function, um, here's the create. Here we can specify the number of, of instances and we get the init value. Um, and so here's basically um, yeah, just a for loop over the number we defined and then we are instantiating here this model by, um, by calling the, the init um, function with the init value. And then we are just storing um, the instantiated model in a, in a list, uh, one internal and one we sent back to Mosaic. So this entities list uh, contains the entity ID and the model so that Mosaic knows which, um, which instances were created. Then we have to implement the step function here in the step function, we get the time, the inputs, and the max advance. The time is just the current uh, simulation time. The inputs uh, can look like this. We have here um, first the um, the model which which gets the data. So here the model zero gets data for the attribute delta, and this delta is coming from um, from an entity with the, with the entity ID, source ID zero, and the value of this is um, 23. To handle this input, um, yeah, here's a for loop to, to um, handle all the, all the entries here. And um, then here inside this loop, we are, we are summing up the, um, the deltas which we get as input. Then we um, set this new delta in the in the model instance, and then we do the step in the model which we had on the first slide defined. So where the real calculation is done. At the end of the step, we return the current time plus one. So this means this is the the mosaic two classic uh, model which is doing the self stepping, and um, and this means that one step later, it will be caught again by Mosaic. 
And then the next function is the get data to, to get the results back to mosaic. Um, so here uh, we have the outputs dictionary, which, um, which let us know which data um, should be provided to mosaic. So here we see that uh, mosaic wants the data from model zero uh, for the attributes delta and value and from model one, just the value attribute. So here again, we have a, a for loop to go through all the entries in the in this dictionary. Um, we check if the attributes which are requested are really available. And then we set um, set the, the, the values of the attributes um, to this data uh, dictionary and return the data dictionary back to Mosaic. This um, could then look like this. So here we see that the data has come from model zero, the attribute delta has the value one and the value has the value 24. So then, um, yeah, to start this uh, from the command line, we also have them to provide a main function, uh, but we will not focus so much on this here. And now we want, as we have developed this model, we want to create a scenario with this. So we uh, want to create um, here three models and connect them to a collector. This collector is a, a really simple simulator which just uh, collects all data and prints it out when the simulation is finished. And then we want to send um, this value and the delta to the collector. So to create the scenario, uh, we have to import mosaic and mosaic util. We have to specify the sim config where we define how mosaic should start the simulators. We have here first the example simulator, which uh, uses the simu simulator mosaic. Um, which is basically what uh, was described in the slides before and the glass example sim. And then we have this collector, which is started from the command line. So in a new process uh, with the collector.py. Then we have to define how long the simulation should, should be running. So here it's uh, 10 seconds or 10 steps. Then we create a, a world. Uh, this world takes uh, the sim config. And then after creating this world, we we are starting the simulators using this world start. Then we instantiate the models. Um, here for our example model, we create one model with the init value two. Then we create the, mo the monitor. We connect the model to the monitor. Um, so now we have one model connected to the monitor, but maybe we want to add more models. For this, we can also use this um, this num parameter here for the create, so that we define that we want to create two instances of this model, and both have then the init value three. And to connect multiple models, we can here also use the mosaic util connect many to one, where we have to um, provide the world, and then um, define that we want to connect the, the models we created before to the monitor. And these are the attributes to be connected. And then uh, after this, we can run the simulation. So I will just jump to, to PyCharm to show how the simulation then can be run. So here we see that um, it's running a bit slowly right now, but here the the, uh, the simulators are are started. The simulation is started. Then we get the message that it's finished, and here is the output of the collector. So we see that here the uh, we see here the data for the three models. This is um, the model zero. Um, we see here that for the time step zero, we have a delta of one and the delta is for all the time steps until time step nine, it's staying at a value of one and the value um, is in the beginning of time step zero, it's three. And until the end, it's um, 
it's increasing until 12 and the same for the other two models um, just that they have another init value because they would define the init value on three so maybe i um do a short interruption because unfortunately we are a bit running out of time because the official end should be uh at one minute so if you have to leave and are interested um in the things um and, and the tutorial and the demos we we will now uh, show these maybe write us an email or so um so maybe we can somehow figure out uh, um, new date or so for for a second presentation if you um now have to leave because of the official um, end of the date but i think we will just um finish the presentation for the people who maybe have enough time to stay here um so so this is the simple execution graph here um of this um first uh, scenario. So here we see just that the example simulator is stepped each time step. And there's uh, yeah, not really something important, um, interesting happening. So for a second scenario, um, we are adding here a controller. Um, the aim of this controller is to keep the values of the models in an interval of, of minus three to three. And this controller here is event based. So this means um, whenever another simulator provides new input for the simulator, the step is triggered. Um, and it provides just new output if really something is happening. So it's not uh, for every time step, um, there is an output of the of the controller. Um, so how to implement this controller? This is quite similar like we did before with the model. We again have to describe, uh, to have to find the meta object. Here the type is event-based. Um, the, the name of the model is agent. And the attributes are well in and delta. Um, yeah, the initialization is also quite similar. We're just creating some lists and dictionaries. Um, the create function is also um, quite similar, just that we are here not um, calling some some other uh, model because here the uh, everything is within this this one file, and we are not um, yeah instantiating a separated model. Um, then the step function here here is the the main control function. Um, so we again get the inputs and go through the through the input dictionary and take the the well in values. Um, we check that there's just it, one input, and then um, we are checking here if the value of a model is um, larger or equals three. Then we set the delta to minus one so that it's not increasing um, more. And if the value is below or equals minus three, then we set the delta again to one so that it's not uh, decreasing below this threshold. Then after this this control function, we um, set the delta to a dictionary, which we send then, uh, which we store then in the in the um, controller and the self .data. And here uh, is a new feature of Mosaic 3 of this event-based um, controller that we don't have to return the next time step, but that we just can return none. Then we also have to implement the get data. Um, yeah, this is also similar like, like in the other model, we are iterating through this outputs dictionary. Um, and we set get here then uh, the data we stored before and the self data from the agent and the attribute we store it here in the um, in a new data object which we then return to mosaic so that mosaic um, gets the output of this controller and then again this this main function 
So um, now we want to create a scenario with this. So we have the three models and a collector. And um, now we add the three agents and we send the, the value from the model to the agent and send the delta um, back from the agent to the model. So here again, the scenario script looks quite, quite similar like before. The only change here is that we add the example control, uh, which is this new controller um, we implemented now. Then the um, this looks is also the same code we just added here, um, the controller start. Uh, here we create instantiate this, this example controller. And then here is a new thing that we connect um, the model and the agent. So we um, do a for loop for all the instances and connect the model um, to the agent. And here um, the output of the model of the value is then the input of the agent, which is the attribute wall in. And then we do also the, the backwards connection from the agent to the model um, where we have the attribute delta. And here we have to define that this is uh, the weak side. So this means that Mosaic has to know where to start. And by defining this here as weak, uh, Mosaic will start with this connection from the model to the agent. And then after that, uh, the connection from the agent to the model. So when I run this simulation, you will see the results in a few seconds. So we see here that the simulators are started. And then we see here um, the output of the example simulators. We see here directly that we have, again, um, some output for every time step. And here we see, see the difference between uh, event-based and time-based, that for the event-based controllers, we just have an output um, for the specific time steps where something really happens. Um, and here we see that the, that the delta was set here to minus one and here to one. And we see that here the values are not increasing like in the first demo until 12 or 13, but they are staying inside this range um, as supposed uh, by the controller. So um, now I wanted also to show the execution graph for this. So here we see that the example sim is uh, yeah, doing the same as in the first scenario. Um, and in the first simulation step at a, at a time zero, um, the data, the results from the example sim are sent to the controller. And then the results are sent back to the example sim, but they are just used at time step one uh, because this example simulator is, is the um, time-based um, simulator, um, it can just uh, receive this data at the next time step. And yeah, so we want to now to build a scenario to show the, um, the new feature of the same time loops. Um, and for this, uh, we add here a new agent, which is a master agent which tries to um, yeah, to control the other controllers. Um, and for doing this, um, this master agent um, needs the, the delta outputs of the, of the three agents and sends them back a new delta value. Um, so this controller is quite similar like the controller shown before, um, which is also um, event-based. And has also this uh, well in and delta. Then here the the changes in the step function. So here the the incoming values uh, are read from the inputs. Then they are um, a sum is built. So so here uh, all the all the normal agents are connected to the master agent. So there will be in our example three values which are here. Um, added to the sum of them. 
And then this uh, master controller in this simple example will just check if the sum is uh, larger than one or smaller than, than minus one, then the delta would be set to zero. So um, that there will be no change in the models. And um, yeah, here in the in the get data, there's not really a change uh, to the other um, controller. I just wanted to show here uh, what is commented out here that we can define for the data object, which will be sent back to Mosaic. We can define the time uh, as we've already showed um, in this presentation, because the output can be um, can be valid for another point in time than the current simulation step. So if we um, would not to have this behavior that we have same time loops, we could send a set um, the the time value of the data uh, dictionary to self time plus one, and then the value would be I would be just valid from the next simulation um, step on. Um, but yeah, here for this example, this is commented out because we want to show the the um, the same time loops. And yeah, here this uh, time would then be set in inside of the outputs or in, inside of the data uh, object. And yeah, now I go to the scenario definition. It's again. Uh, the same script, just that we add here this example master controller. Then here it's again the same. We start the master controller. We create here the master agent. Um, and then we connect here. So here we have uh, already the connection from the model to the agent. And then here we are doing the connections from the agents to the master agent. So um, yeah, we connect here the, the output delta of the agent to the value input of the master agent and the, um, the delta output of the master agent to the, to the delta of the agent. And then we connect this again to the monitor like in the other examples. And now, um, yeah, here I start with the execution graph. Uh, which shows now what is happening here. So in the beginning, um, it's just sending data to the example control, but there is uh, no change. Uh, but then in the second time step, um, here is something happening in the controller so that some results are sent to the master controller. Um, and the master controller um, is then also active and sends back a an, an value to the example controller. And here we see um, that we have a second um, dot, what, is, uh, what means that we have a second step and we are still within the, the time uh, of the simulation of two. So here we have the si same time loop that we are doing a second step um, inside the same, same time. And then we are sending back the results um, to the master controller. Um, yeah, but now as he already um, limited the deltas of the of the um, example controllers, the master controller is, is not doing anything here and will not send any further data. And so the same time loops ends at this uh, point in time. Um, there's a a parameter which can be set in mosaic how many of these loops uh, are possible so um, i think this is uh, by default uh, 100 so that 100 of those loops could occur and then uh, mosaic will will stop it um, because this of course uh, uh, can be a problem when you're not um, taking care of this by your own that somehow this loop has to break because otherwise um, yeah, the simulation would be in a deadlock. Um, yeah, so this has to be handled um, by doing, doing a simulation with the same time loops. 
Um, I can uh, just also start this um, this demo. We see here just so this is um, just the output of the execution graph, and here we see that we have then, um, for example, here the example master controller. Um, this eight here is the is the current time step, and here we see that we have a execution at time step eight, and then again at this eight point one, so that we have no new time, but we have this uh, same time loop where we have the first iteration, and then uh, after that we jump to the to the next time step. Um, okay, so I'm now through with the uh, with the tutorials.